Hi, I'm Ross Barefoot, and welcome to one of our bite-sized SEO videos. We're going to take just one simple topic here and break it down in a way that we hope is understandable. The topic is robots.txt. Now, you've probably run across that term somewhere, and that's why you're here to look at this video. So, this video is intended for a non-technical audience to help you to understand the concept and why it's important if you're interested in getting your website seen on Google. So before we get started on anything, let's uh, talk about terminology. And uh, search engine spiders, which you've heard that term, always come up in a discussion of a robots.txt. And the reason for that is that a search engine spider and a robot are the same thing. So just keep that in mind when we say a search engine uh, spider or a robot or a search engine bot, we're always talking about an equivalency here. So now that we've got the terminology straight, let's discuss what these spiders do. Well, they are automated programs that continuously crawl the internet, and that's where we get the term spider. And robot, we get from the fact that they run on an automated fashion, no human is involved. They crawl the internet looking for web pages, and then when they find a domain, like let's say they find your domain, then they try to go through that domain and crawl all over the pages that are connected within that domain. There's a rationale for that, and that is because the spider is basically a scout for the search engine. So what they do is they'll come to your website, they'll look at the pages, and then they send what they find back to Google or Bing, in the, as the case may be. And then those search engines place what their spiders find in a huge database called an index. And it's very huge, very sophisticated, and very fast. Once your page and many others are in that database, Google is ready to show that page in their search results screen. And so if they find your page is relevant to a particular search result and they trust it as authoritative, you have a good shot of appearing in a search result to a user. So if you're moving ahead um, mentally, in the discussion, you'll see that we need to love these things called spiders because we know Google has to be able to figure out our website in order to be able to show it in their search results. So if you're an SEO or a webmaster, or by extension, if you're just a business with a website, your number one priority is to make it easy for Google to figure out that website. And we call that being search engine friendly. If you read Google's literature, they make it shorter. They just call it being search friendly. So we need to make it friendly to their robot spiders, and that's where robots.txt comes in. Now, this is a little file that lives on your website. You don't have to have one, but most websites have a robots.txt living, living somewhere on their domain, whether they realize it or not. And that little file can either be a welcome mat to search engines, or it can be a no trespassing sign. Well, there's a huge difference between those two things, so you need to ask yourself, what is your robots.txt functioning as? Let's put it back in the mix here. So again, here's the screen from before. The spiders come to your domain. But in real life, rather than just crawling your pages, they're, gonna, they're going to look for a robots.txt in order to see if they have permission to crawl your pages. And if they see that they do, then they'll move on and crawl all your pages. But what if, by design or by accident, you have one of these warning, no trespassing signs there? Google and Bing are going to respect that. They're going to head on out, and your pages will never make it into their index. So that's the general idea. Is it happening to your site? Well, here's a way that you can see whether there is evidence of a problem. Plug the following line into a Google search, or, and you can do the same thing with a Bing search, site colon yourdomain.com, and obviously you put in your domain. Now let me do it here in a, as an example. I'll go over and I'm going to type in site. I've done it before, so there it is. And I'm going to use one of the sites that I do, the Search Engine Academy. So site colon searchengineacademy.com. I hit enter, and notice what Google shows me right here. It says that it has found about 728 results. So roughly speaking, let's say Google has over 700 of our web pages in their index. So we're glad to see that. We want people to find those pages. Now you can pause this right now 
and do that on your own site and see what you find out. So did you do it? If you did, what results did you get? Does Google show most of the pages of your site, at least the pages you want and expect Google to be able to see and show? Or did you get something like what I'm going to show you on the next slide? Now, this is a case where a no trespassing sign makes a particular website, a different one that I've had to obscure, very search unfriendly. And notice what it says down here. When I do that, instead of 728 or however many results, it says did not match any documents. Now, if I knew that I had 500 pages and, and I came back with two or three, I'd, I'd still think that I had something of a problem here. So, if you suspect that the problem might be related to one of these robots.txt files, now there's two methods that you can check it out more specifically. So first we looked for evidence of it. Now we're going to use one of these two methods or preferably both. The easiest one is just to look at your robots.txt in a web browser. Now this is the easiest, but you might need to know a little bit in order to do it. The other thing you can do is use the tool that Google has provided for webmasters, and that is Google's Search Console. Let's do the first one first. Namely, we're going to look at the robots.txt in a browser, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to do it for the Search Engine Academy again. So I type it in, and notice this is what it looks like, searchengineacademy.com forward slash robots.txt. Hit Enter. And notice, I don't get a web page, I just get some lines of pretty cryptic text. And if you don't know much about robots.txt, and I assume you don't or you wouldn't be watching this video, this is not going to make a lot of sense to you and you don't need to worry about it. Uh, it doesn't have to make sense to you right now. It just shows there is one, there's some stuff going on. So I'm going to show you one that you would need to worry about. and. Let me go to the following slide. Now, let me just pause for a moment before I go to the next slide. If you did what I just did, that is, go to your domain and type in slash robots.txt and nothing comes up. You get a page not found. At this point, probably I tell you, you probably don't need to worry about anything. Because it's sort of like if your house doesn't have either a welcome mat or a no trespassing sign, people are still going to free, feel free to come up to your door and ring the bell. And the search engines will come and index your site, even if you do not have a robots.txt file. So, you know, to a certain degree, you can just shine it on if you don't have one. Now, if you do have one, here's what you don't want to see. And I'm going to show you exactly how to interpret this particular robots.txt. Notice right here it says user agent. Now, a user agent is anything that navigates its way to your site. It can be a human using Firefox or Google Chrome or Internet Explorer, or it can be one of these robots. If it was a robot, um, those are identified by names like Googlebot or Bingbot. Now this little symbol here, the asterisk, is a symbol that often in the world of the Internet means everything. It's a wild card. So basically what it's saying is this means you. Every user agent, whether you're using Firefox or whether you're a search engine spider, the following line applies to you. And that following line says disallow. Disallow means basically stay away from whatever follows the colon. Well, in this case, what follows the colon? It's just a slash. And a slash is very meaningful here because basically it means every page on the website. Just like if you had a house, you could invite people into the house and say, hey, you have the run of the house, but please don't go into my pantry. I've had people stealing food. So you could do that, right, with guests. And you can do that with a robots.txt by what follows that disallow. But we're not going to worry about that because basically this one, since it just has the slash, just remember that means everything. So it means not only can you not come in my house, don't come in my yard, Give me wide berth. I don't want any visitors, any kind of visitors. So let's say you suspect that you do. That it, let's say you're looking at your robots.txt. You see some stuff going on. You think maybe it qualifies as a problem. Maybe it doesn't. Well, the next stop would be Google's Search Console. 
And if you don't have a Search Console account, notice that there's a link where you can go for more information. I'm not going to walk you through it right now. When you get into Google Search Console, there are two different places that are relevant to this discussion. The first one is by navigating to Google Index, and then the subpage is Blocked Resources, and to Crawl, and the subpage is called Robots.txt Tester. Let's look at the first one here. And notice over here on the left, I am within the navigational panel of Google Search Console, and I see Google Index, Blocked Resources. Well, I do see that there is one page with a blocked resource, as is indicated right there. And that page is hosted here. What does this mean? Right now, we don't need to figure out what it means. What we need to see is whether it matches our own domain name. And the domain name that we're looking at in Search Console is going to be shown up at the top right. This host name does not match our domain. There are no blocked resources that can be blocked by one of our robots.txt files. And that's what this means. So it's a simple decision. If you see, and just note, down in the host, in the table that I'm showing where it says host, there can be more than one row. But if none of those rows match your domain name, you're probably done here. You don't need to worry. Nothing really is affecting the search engine that you have any control over. However, let's take another example. Here we see that there's a whopping 377 pages on this website with blocked resources. Moreover, if we look down here, we can see that the host column shows a match with the domain. So there might be a problem here. There might not be a problem. Now we need to go to the next step, which is we need to use the tester. And notice over here, we've gone to the crawl section, and we've gone to the choice that says robots.txt tester. There's a bunch of stuff going on here. And basically what it is, if you were paying attention earlier, you'll see that this is the robots.txt file that we navigated to. But you don't need to pay attention to that, really. Instead, just look at the tester down at the bottom. Your domain name is going to show up, already filled in by Google, and then you can put in any page on your site. And then click the Test button, and you're going to see whether there's a problem with that page. Now, the next screen, I've put in one of our high-value pages that we want Google to pay attention to. It's called Free SEO Online Webinars. And notice what it says on the right. It says, Allowed. That's a good thing. Breathe a sigh of relief. And if you think that maybe other pages are affected, go ahead and plug them in. You can put in any page you want to. Click the Test button. It'll tell you whether a page is allowed. Or if it wasn't allowed, that would glow red, and it would say Denied. So if you're starting to see some stuff that says Denied, well then at this point, you probably, and again, I'm making an assumption here that you're, you're probably watching this because you're not a real tech head. And I, and I use tech head as a loving term because I consider myself in that group. But if you're not really in that technical sphere at this point, you just want to kind of diagnose whether there's a problem, well, know when to say when. This is probably enough. You've seen enough evidence to indicate maybe you've got a problem. So now involve someone who is a tech head. Get your developer or an SEO consultant, bring them into the discussion, say, look at what I've discovered. I've found that some of our pages are showing as denied. There seems to be a problem here. What do we need to do to fix it? Basically, you need to take it to the next level. And the reason is because robots.txt files are often very simple, but sometimes they can get pretty complex. Just to close out this video, I'm showing you a live robots.txt from a fairly well-known website. Now, if you follow it down to the bottom, you can see I cut it off here. And the reason I cut it off is because it goes on for hundreds of lines. I'm pretty sure it's page after page of this stuff. And you can see it's pretty cryptic. You've got different special characters, and some are disallow, and some are allow, and so forth. Well, as it turns out, this is the robots.txt file that lives right on the Google domain. So yes, Google not only tells you about robots.txt, they use one on their own site. 
In any case, I hope this has been useful to you. If you want to get really technical with this discussion, I am giving you here a link that you can go to. And uh, that link is basically giving you all the information you ever wanted to know and a lot you don't want to know about robots.txt. So have at it and have fun. In the meantime, again, my name is Ross Barefoot. I'm with Horizon Web Marketing, which is an SEO consultancy and training organization in Las Vegas, and the Search Engine Academy, which is a global alliance of SEO trainers. Hope to see you back here for another one of our bite-sized SEO videos or any of our other training opportunities. Bye for now.